when I was a young man, my mom gave me some very, very sage advice. She said, Cameron, never judge people unless those people are using print on statements in their Java code, in which case we must judge them very, very harshly. Now, I don't want to have to judge you harshly, which is why I've put this Spring Boot logging tutorial together to show you how to do proper logging in your Spring applications. Now, before we get too deep into it, I just want to point out that Spring can be configured with any number of external logging frameworks. So those frameworks themselves can be configured at an extreme level. What I'm going to talk about here is logging at the Spring Boot level. I'll show you how to do proper logging in Spring Boot. And I want to show you a couple of configurations that are going to make you much more productive as a Spring developer and make the software development experience with Spring a lot more enjoyable. Hi, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor-in-chief over at the serverside.com. I have to be one of the biggest Spring and Spring Boot advocates. And one of my goals here is to show you how to do logging in Spring Boot, starting with getting that good old SLF4J Spring Logger Factory configured, which is what we're going to do next. So if we want to master logging in Spring Boot, the first thing we're going to need is an actual Spring Boot project so that we can start working with the logging. And that's what I'm going to create right here. I've got Spring Source Tool Suite in Eclipse. I know it is a light mode, so I apologize to you vampires out there who are having retinal damage from all of these photons going on your eyes. And this is going to be a simple Maven project. I'm not even going to add a starter. I'm just going to use pure spring pure spring boot here in the application we create now i do need an application where i can run some code so i'm going to open up my class here i'm going to say i want this to implement command line runner and the command line runner is an interface that allows me to have a method where i can run the program like you were running a, a main method in Java, except it's going to give you all of the spring goodness. Now, uh, I need to organize my import, so Control shift o should organize that import. There, it is not there, so I've probably spelt it wrong. No, implements command line. Oh, just took a second. <laughs> there it is. Third generation i7 is what I'm using here. It did take a, a while. Now, you'll see, uh, do you see the red X there? Um, if you see a red X, you need your eyes checked, because that is a white X on a red background. But if you see that, that's because uh, I need to also add this unimplemented method. So I'll just use the tool to do that. And you see that's the run method. And over here, what can I do? Well, I can run my code, right? Um, and I'm just going to do a system.out.println. This is a console message, not a log message. Right? I mean, I guess theoretically a console message is a log message. But if I run this, you see the basic you know, printout that we expect from Spring. There it is. Boom. This is a console message, not a log message. I mean, this gets printed to uh, what a file called systemout.log. So I mean, we could argue that it's a log message. But when we talk about logging, one of the important aspects of logging is different logging levels, right? And so the idea is when you, you log something, you associate it with a logging level. Like there's six. There is info, trace, debug, warn, error, and fatal. Did I get all six right there? Uh, and then the server can turn on or off certain levels, right? So in production, maybe you just only want to log fatal and warning messages, right? Because you don't want to slow down the server by printing all of this superfluous info. In dev, you might want all that information, right? You want to see exactly what's happening, what's going on. That's kind of the idea of logging. Now, how do you get logging into your code? Well, you do it like this. You start off, you say logger, and then logger, I like calling it log. Some people call it logger. Some people call it logger in ale. Logger factory dot get logger. And then the argument that you pass in is the, the name of the class itself. And you would do this for each class that, that you have. Uh, as you, you're building your Spring applications. Now, looks like I've got some imports to organize. So I'm going to say source, organize imports. And I'm going to use SLF for J here. I want it to be SLF for J all around. You notice in that window, there were a bunch of different logging frameworks and you can download even more if you like. I'm going to keep things simple here. And that's why I'm going to use the simple logging framework for just joking. Simple logging facade for Java. It's not framework for Java. So I'm going to throw those in there. 
that's imported in. And now in my code, I can do the, the login. So I can say log.info and not null, log.info and I'll say info, this is an info message. I'll do three of these message. I don't have time for six, but uh, log.warn and then what do I want? Log.warn and warn. This is a warning. And then what log.error is kind of the cool one to use. And error, this is an error. Okay, done. Tutorial over, just joking. Um, run this as a Spring Boot application. And there we got our console message, but Hold on, the logs aren't there. Where's the, this is new. I'm just joking. You scroll all the way over here to the right. You gotta scroll so far over to the right that you're almost left again. And there's the log message. You can see, you know, info, warn, error right there. Uh, and then the message over here. And now we're actually doing logging. And as I said, one of the things that you can do is you can turn logging levels on and you can turn logging levels off. And the way you do that is you head over into your properties file. So I'm going to head over into properties here and I'm going to set the threshold for logging to warn. Okay. And so before we saw that we got the info warning and error messages, right? You can see them right down there. Let's go back to my application and run as a Java application and Boom, all of a sudden we now have warn and error, but the info is no longer there, right? We can't see that anymore. And in fact, if I set this and said, hey, we only want to print out error messages. Now, if I came in and ran this again, we wouldn't see the warning. We wouldn't see the info. All we would see is the error message. And there you go. This is an error. So that's a, another cool thing you could do. Now, by the way, that is just for the console. So if I went in and set uh, a property here and said, hey, I want the actual log file to be printed out to see temp logs. I think I got one there already. So I'll delete it so that we know this is fresh, fresh as the Prince of Bel Air. So I'm going to say, I'm going to just say, hey, you know, the application logging, I'm going to send that into a log file. Uh, pointing out again, uh, the threshold for error is just at the console level. I'll come over here and I'll say run as a Java application once again. We'll see everything printed out. And when I head over into this log file here, it's thinking about it. And well, we got the error there. When I come over here, bringing up Notepad++, you can see the, the logging is a little different, right? We actually, the threshold that we're setting for the console um, is not the same threshold that we're actually setting for the individual log file. So that's just a, a, um, a console setting. And you can go and configure the logger itself and change what it puts into the, the log file. But that is worth noting, right? Just uh, for, for people that uh, are wondering exactly how that might work. Okay, I'm doing just a very quick interruption here. A couple of things. Uh, you know, the YouTube algorithm hates me for some reason right now. If you're enjoying this video, if you could like, subscribe, and even leave a comment, I would really love to hear from you and, and find out if you've enjoyed this. It'll also help wake up the YouTube algorithm and maybe give my, my channel and my videos a little bit more exposure. So I would really appreciate that. The other thing too, is I got a new copy of Hibernate Made Easy coming out, the best-selling book. I've updated it for version seven of Hibernate. So if you're into JPA, Spring Data, Spring JDBC, uh, please sign up for my mailing list. You don't have to buy it, but uh, I'll be raffling off some free copies for members of my newsletter. Um, and I'll also be making uh, chapters available through the newsletter as well. So sign up for that. There's a link in the description. And finally, I helped out with some final edits on Darcy DeClute Scrum Master Certification Guide. So if you're agile and you're working with Scrum and you're interested in getting Scrum Master certified, a lot of people have been using this book to score 100% on the product owner and Scrum Master exam. So it's available on Amazon. Go pick that up. Uh, I know Darcy would be very happy if you did. Okay, that's it. I'm really sorry to, to bother you. Let's get back into the coding.
We've seen that kind of setting some of the logging. Now, I don't like these great big long messages. So the other thing you can do is you can actually go in and format these a little bit, have a little bit of fun with what actually gets printed out. Um, and so take a, a quick look at this. Here is a, a, an interesting update to the logging pattern. I'm going to go to my properties file. I'm going to say that uh, I want to use this crazy logging pattern here that prints out the date and the time, the logging level, the message. And I like to put that new line at the start, just call me crazy. And so I'm going to say that the, the pattern of logging to the console should be a little bit different. I'm going to come over to my application, run this again as a Java application. And boom, you can see that, well, the logging is a little bit more concise. Now, I would even say, like, do I really need the application name there? Do I need the log level? Do I need the full date? In production, you do. In production, you'll want all of those things. But, you know, if I'm just doing development, I don't need the year for sure. I don't need the month, maybe the day. Um, I don't need to print out the name of the application. That's not going to help me at all. Um, the message I need. I don't even know if I need the log level. Like, does it matter to me? I mean, because I can turn on or off the log level that I want. I don't know. But... Okay, so I've changed the output and I've really minimized it. So now I come over to my Spring Boot application. I say run as a Java application. I don't know. I think that looks nicer. I think that that's just going to make my life a lot easier as a developer going through this. In fact, you know, one of the things I actually don't even like is that banner there at the top. Uh, that annoys me. And there are actually things that are useful that... Uh, I could print out in my, my banner. So one of the things I actually like to do is I like to actually just get rid of that banner being logged at the beginning of the application. And it's it's not too hard to, to do that. Um, all you have to do is go into your uh, resources folder and create a brand new display to go out when your application starts. So I'm going to create a, a new file here. I'll call it my banner.txt, I guess. Sorry, the font ends up being really small there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, hey, follow me on Twitter and YouTube. Um, print out what the currently active profile is. By the way, you should be doing this in a profile. Uh, because if you configure your own environment for logging, you may not want these changes to go into production. So what we normally do is we set up a development profile for this information. In fact, I'm, and, uh, I'm not sure what spring application profiles will print out if I don't actually have any other profiles. So we're going to learn right now. Um, but instead of the spring banner, I just want this to print out. Follow me on Twitter and YouTube at Cameron MCNZ. Blatant plug. Um, then I'll say the active profile is whatever I specialize in. I don't know what that is. It's just junk there. Um, print out the application name and the Spring Boot version. And then let me just get on with the application. That's And you can actually put in all sorts of other information about the environment that you might think is useful for local debugging. And then with that done, all we have to do is say, hey, you know, when we start up, find that my banner.txt file and use it. And so we're no longer going to see this annoying spring window. The application is going to start up, start up. We'll say run as a Java application. And now when it starts up, it says the active profile is, and then actually it just prints out nothing because we don't have an active profile. We don't see the spring stuff up there. And here, you know, everything is printed out in a much more concise fashion. Now we don't have a spring profile, but you should be doing enterprise development without spring profiles. And all of these configuration changes, you should be doing locally. They shouldn't go out into production. You uh, you don't want you know to create your own banner and then have somebody come to you and say, hey, how come the log files on the production server say, follow Cameron MCNZ on Twitter? 
So another thing you should do, if you're configuring custom logging, make a lot of changes to your environment, and you should be doing this anyways, you should create a new file called application-dev.properties. This is called creating a, a spring profile. And this is gonna be the dev profile. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all of this information here about logging and the banner and all of that. I'm gonna put that into this profile. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head over into in the basic application properties file that I don't need that. But I will say that the active profile is dev. And now when I run my application, well, it's gonna use the data in the dash dev profile, which is all the information that I've configured so far. So I'll come over here, I'll right click and say, run as a Java application. Now there should be nothing new under the sun. Boom, we actually see my application running properly. And then when we go into deployment, well, somebody can change that to default. Somebody could uh, override that at the JVM level. We could actually leave that as dev, and then at the JVM level, somebody could override it. And then it's not gonna use the dev environment. It'll use prod or just the default application properties file. And by the way, it is worth pointing out that uh, on that previous run, after we added the profile in, we didn't get just the, uh, the, the expression string. Um, it actually says active profile dev. Now we'll change the profile to default. Okay, run this again. Now notice that beautiful, concise logging at the bottom there. Boom, it all goes away because we're using a, a different profile, right? We changed it from the dev profile where we've got all of our custom logging and even our cheeky little, hey, follow Cameron MC on Z on Twitter or whatever you want to put on your banner when spring starts up. Um, but when we change that application property file to say no, that's not what we want. Uh, we want the standard stuff, just what's configured by default or in the application properties file. Um, well, that uh, that just runs the, the normal environment for us. So there you go. And I think that just about covers it as far as uh, doing logging. You know, one of the only other things that I was maybe interested in, in mentioning was the fact that um, this really isn't about logging, but it is something interesting to log. And it's information about all of the auto configuration that happens behind the scenes. Uh, a lot of times people are um, think that auto configuration is mysterious, um, but it's actually not that mysterious. I'm gonna put this in the dev profile, right? Let's stay honest here. Um, so I'm gonna kick off uh, uh, debug equals true. And this is actually gonna list all of the different auto configurations that are available. And in fact, I'm actually going to just take the default logging format because I want to get all sorts of information about it. But let me run this application. So I'll write, say run as a Java application. And as this runs, oh boy, the lights are probably going to go dim locally um, as we try and print out all of that information. Let me get that debug equals true onto the first line there, debug equals true, run as a Java application. Okay, let me put that debug equals true into application.properties. So we put the debug in equals true into application properties and then run our application, run as Java application. Make sure just changes are saved. Okay, I'm actually gonna put that into just application properties here. And I'm going to use the default profile. And then at this point, I'm gonna say run as a Java application. And when this runs, you'll see that it prints out information about all of the things that potentially could be auto configured. So negative matches are the things that aren't auto configured. And then if we go to positive matches, we see the things that are auto configured. Um, and just looking at here, we can see that AOP 
is configured, right? Spring AOP proxy target class equals true. Spring AOP auto equals true. If you ever want to go into your logs and override and change any of the auto configured properties, be it Spring Data, be it Spring JDBC, Spring Web, all you have to do is find the property there that um, configures it, and then you can come into your code, update it in app properties, make that false. And then the next time you actually run your application, that thing will be turned off in terms of auto configuration. So I'll run that right now. And now if we actually go back in here and take a look at what's configured, you'll see that AOP is no longer listed there as a positive match for something that's auto configured. And if I scroll down to negative matches, well, you can see that it is now turned off. So that's not specifically with logging, I would say, but it does. Uh, it is something interesting to log in your application to see what is auto configured and uh, then potentially turn it on or off if you want in the application properties file. By the way, I've got a, a extensive tutorial on auto configuration if you want to learn more. But there you go. Those are the ins and outs of working with uh, the logger in Spring, doing Spring logging. Not only shows you how to do logging in Spring, but I think it also gives you a, a couple of tips, a couple of ideas, how to configure your own development environment so that, I don't know, things work a, a little bit better, your logs are a little bit nicer, easier to go through, and subsequently things are a little bit easier to troubleshoot. So there you go. Um, that's, uh, that is Spring Log. Now, if you enjoyed that tutorial, why don't you head over to the serverside.com. I'm the editor-in-chief over there. We've got lots of great tutorials on Spring, Spring Boot, Java, Jakarta EE, Git, GitHub, you name it. Um, if you're interested in my personal antics, you can always follow me on Twitter, at Cameron MCNZ. There are a couple of books behind me, Hibernate Made Easy, and and uh, Pickering of Springfield about the Simpsons. Pickering of Springfield about the Simpsons. Uh, even uh, What is Web Surf, which I'm not selling too many copies of. And Darcy DeClute Scrum Master Certification Guide. I helped a little bit with some of the final edits there. Um, people are using that to score 100% on the Scrum Master Certification Guide. So certification exams. So if you're agile and you're working with Scrum, I highly recommend it. I used it to get uh, the PSM1 and PSM2 certifications myself. Um, and there you go. I guess the last thing to say is that uh, if you enjoyed this tutorial, why don't you subscribe on YouTube?